I can see Jyotisha, Ms. Mariam Sana, Vidya Shankar. Good evening to everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. Sir, sir, uh, yes, sir. We are setting that uh, live streaming part. We are doing, sir. Okay, okay. Good luck to you all, students. Robin, Giri, I can see uh, Miss uh, Kalinga, Miss Jyotisha. Good evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Khatija. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Are you going to live stream? Good evening, ma'am. All of you, can you just turn on the video? Because live streaming started. Yeah, it's going live, live. Hmm. Correct, right? Started going on. Daryl is there, Isaac is there, Nida Fatima. Live it up. Could it in desert? I could. I could get over
اعظم زر اعظم سر ہیلو گڈ افٹر نون یس مسٹر سرجن ہاں یس سر پرنسپل سر از جوائننگ ناؤ سو ائی تھنک 430 ایکزیکٹلی وی کین سٹارٹ سر ایکزیکٹلی لائیو سٹریمنگ از گوئنگ آن لائک ان فیس بک اینڈ یوٹیوب اٹ از گوئنگ آن سر اوکے ایز سون ایز سون ایز دا سر جوائنز ویل سٹارٹ ایٹ 430 شارپ 430 از دی گیون ٹائم 7 منٹس اور وی سٹارٹ اوکے سر Mr. Sajid, you make sure that uh, you mute the rest of them. When the panelist speaks, that time you can uh, let them, uh, you can unmute them. Otherwise, if by chance someone uh, make themselves unmute, then it's going to disturb everyone. Hello, boys. I'm here. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, all of you. Good I'm afternoon. here. You can carry on. Good afternoon, sir. sir. Good evening. evening. Good afternoon to all of you. I will not be with video. I will be here only. I am here only. I am listening all of you. Okay, sir. Okay.
panelists see i am going to mute everyone only the panelists can unmute and they can talk and the share option is also given for you panelists can share the documents whichever you are using the powerpoint presentation you can share and continue with the work okay It's four thirty, Mr. Sajid. I think we. So okay, I think start. we can lock the lock the rooms, right, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Locking the room is not necessary, but we can we can start uh, our webinar. The program, right? Program. Okay, sir. Students, please start. Uh, Sajid, record is also. Uh, ah yes, sir. Sure, record. sir. Live streaming is going on, sir, in Facebook okay. and YouTube okay. also, sir. Okay. We will record, sir. Ms. Jyotisha, you can begin. Okay, sir. Shall I start? Go ahead, start. The best things in life happen unexpectedly. The best stories begin with, and all of a sudden, the best adventures were never planned as they turned out to be. Good evening to one and all and a very warm welcome to this exclusive webinar initiated by Ideal Indian School Doha, Qatar for and by the students. Before we begin, let's watch a short video. Friends, I'm sure most of you would have watched the movie, The Forbidden Kingdom, in which Jackie Chan tells the kid that to learn something new, one needs to empty his cup. I have a cup filled with water in it. Now, can I pour more water into the same cup? Obviously no, because the water will spill. Similarly, to learn something new, we need to unlearn and empty our cup. A very warm welcome to the All Students webinar. This is one of its kind to hone the interpersonal and public speaking skills among the students. This is the second of the series of webinar that are lined up in the times to come. Today, the world is going through one of the most challenging situation. I call it challenging and not a problem because I strongly believe that only when we are challenged do we come out with solutions? We come out with new ideas. When going to school became a challenge, schools were brought home. I am Jyotisha Pillai, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar session. Today, we have few panelists who would be speaking on the topic, positive effects of online classes. Among our panelists, we have Master J. Isaac Samuel, Master Daryl Menezes, Master Robin Abraham Vargis, Master Giri Shankar, Miss Sandra Alexander, Miss Kalinga Sahani, Miss Zenobia Fernandez, and Miss Gayatri Satish K. To help us make this webinar useful and a successful one, we have our question answer coordinator, Miss Zia Sulfika, who shall compile questions and queries which you can jot down in the chat box. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our moderator for today, Ms. Jyotisha S. Pillay. 
She is a student of class 12 in the science stream. She has held the office of Assistant Cultural Secretary in the year 2019-20. She is also an active member of the Ideal Literary Club Voice Out. She is the proud winner of the first prize for the Interschool Elocution Competition among 20 other schools during the Qatar National Day celebrations. She won the title of Best Speaker and the second runner-up for the Interschool Debate Competition. She also represented Ideal Indian School at DPS Monarch International Webinar and also for the Interschool Competition Student of the Year. She is also a very good dancer and singer. Thank you, Zia, for the introduction. Now, to start with, may I invite our first panelist, Ms. Sandra Alexander. Ms. Sandra Alexander is a student of class 12 who loves the subjects of astrophysics, biology, and archaeology. She is a member of the Ideal Literary Club Voice Out and holds the office of prefect for the academic year 2020-2021. Sandra scored a 10 percentage in a social science board examination in class 10. Now, let's hear Sandra's views on the topic. Thank you, Jyotisha. A very warm welcome to everyone attending this webinar today. I, Sandra Alexander, would like to share my opinion on the positive effects of online classes on education. Distance learning has been around for a long time, even before technology made it extremely accessible. Traditional schooling is seeing an increased proliferation of virtual training materials and online courses. Even in a world of tried and tested schooling systems and curricula, the most successful schools are the ones that adapt to the changing times and to the expectations of parents, students, and society. Now, the question may arise, if online education is here to stay, then what are its implications on traditional methods of learning and teaching? Instead of focusing on the pros and the cons, the conversation we should be having today is about leveraging online education to make our education systems more conducive to learning. As of late, online classes have become immensely popular among working professionals and students, especially those pursuing higher education. Why is this so? This is because these categories of online learners find immense benefit in the autonomy and flexibility that these courses offer. In fact, these courses can be planned around their own schedules, allowing them to incorporate various aspects of their daily routine comfortably, and may also provide them with some free time to indulge in various other activities to enhance the quality of their lives or to improve their skills. For me personally, it has allowed me to dive back into old hobbies that I would have otherwise put off with the age old excuse of not having enough of time. These online classes also inculcate very important values that we as students can especially benefit from. It's because these classes call for a greater amount of motivation and self-discipline. In a normal classroom setting, you may have one or more instructors who can hold you accountable for your coursework. But in an online-based education system, it's up to us students to set our own goals, to track our own progress, and to meet our deadlines. As we all know, humans are social beings. And as such, one does not study effectively in isolation. Therefore, another advantage of online classes is the fact that it provides facilities like one-on-one -on -one support, emails, online discussion forums. All of these can be conducted at any time of the day and at everybody's convenience. Technology has also greatly added to the visual aspect by allowing us to incorporate various animations and other modified methods of teaching. This makes subject matter interesting, engaging, which is very helpful for effective communication and learning. As students progress to higher classes, they begin to seek more 
autonomy and intellectual freedom. Online classes can help them pursue highly individualized learning programs, sometimes even college level courses. At this crucial stage of choosing the right career path, it allows us students to explore our options by letting us choose different introductory topics in different fields before committing to a specialization. This, along with real-world exploration, hands-on exercises, and thorough assessment can really add to our learning progress. It also helps, a helps us become independent learners, preparing us for college. It provides a platform for those students who are otherwise quite shy and hesitant from asking questions or engaging in a classroom, as they can now do the same but from the comfort of their own homes. This helps the student grow in confidence and despite social distancing, improves their social skills. Another added advantage of online education is that it opens up new opportunities for children who come from weaker socioeconomic communities, especially those who do not have access to traditional learning resources like teachers, infrastructure, even textbooks. It connects them to a global network of online learners where they are exposed to a wide range of perspectives. The ideas they receive will not be limited to the number of heads in one classroom. With the advancement of technology and applications, several mobile phone apps have been developed that provide enhanced learning opportunities. Since these gadgets and mobile phones have already found their way into our hands, it would only make sense to make the best use of the technology that is at our disposal. As such, these applications are now being used to supplement classroom learning. In fact, virtual public schools have been set up in some parts of the world. These offer educational courses from kindergarten till 12th grade. They offer a combination of the traditional and online modes of education. These programs help bring both parents and teachers into the fold by involving parents in their child's education from the get-go. As the overlap of traditional and online modes of education continues to become more and more inevitable, it is important that we steer education in the right direction with gradual but definite changes and make our education systems relevant to our futures through ingenuity, passion, and careful planning. Thank you and have a very nice day. Very well spoken, Sandra. The fact that you mentioned about schools adapting to change is very true. I think that we must all accept the fact that change is inevitable and we need to start appreciating the solutions that have been brought up every time we face a challenge, especially during a transformation. Thank you, Sandra. Let's all give Sandra a round of applause once again. Now we have our next panelist, Master J. Isaac Samuel. Master J. Isaac Samuel is a student of class 12 of the science stream. He holds the position of head prefect presently. He is fascinated by the field of physics and is aspiring to get into IISER. I successfully scored a hundred percentage in his social science board examination in class 10. He also achieved 99 percentage in the NGSF exam round one. Isaac enjoys reading cliffhangers and thrillers. Isaac shall now present his views on the topic. Thank you, Ms. Jyotisha, for the wonderful introduction. And a very warm welcome to everyone who's taken their time to attend this meeting. In the month of August, 1665, the Great Plague was spreading fast across Europe many government and educational institutions were being forced to shut down as a precautionary measure. At this time, a young man had to stay away from his university for over two years. But this two years had set the stage for this young man to change the field of physics forever. This young man 
is none other than Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton formulated the laws of gravity and the laws of optics during a pandemic. And the success story doesn't end here. William Shakespeare wrote popular plays like the Macbeth and the King Lear during a pandemic. And painters like Edward Munch drew popular paintings during the Spanish flu epidemic. So I think now it's the student's responsibility to take this in their hands, to add to this list of success stories. The baton now is in our hands and it's our responsibility to run this race successfully and to pass it on to the next generation. Now there are two perspectives to this responsibility. One is the responsibility that comes as a student and the other, the responsibility that comes as a family member. First, let's talk about the responsibility that comes as a student. When I talk about responsibilities as a student, the first thing that comes in our mind is punctuality. Now remember, punctuality is all about respecting our own commitments. As students, we have one commitment, that's making our career, building the grounds, making the cornerstone for our career and building of it. So I think it should become our responsibility to become punctual in everything that we do. Now in online classes, we have this one less pressure from our teachers, or in fact, even from our parents to be on time to our classes. But it should become our responsibility to be punctual to our classes and not just classes, but to our academics, the tasks and the assignments that are given to us by both our teachers and our parents. And at this time, another problem that students face is procrastination because as all our classes, be it tuition or our school, have all moved online. So we all have the tendency of procrastinating. But there's an effective tool to overcome this. The effective tool is setting goals. All we need to do is take a moment in the morning and write down all the tasks that we have resolved to complete in that day. And we need to start doing them one by one. As we complete each task, we strike them off and we are more motivated to do the next. At the end of the day, you're not procrastinating, but you're more motivated and you're willing to be more productive the next day. Now, talking about online classes, we all are mostly distracted during, the, during these classes. And there's nothing much to expect. Why? Because all our distractions are just a click away. But Harvard professors think there's an effective tool to overcome this. That's by taking notes. Now, when notes taking become a student's responsibility, then we are forcing ourselves to listen to our classes, to listen to our lecturers and take notes. And when we do so, we are not distracted by anything, be it social media notifications or anything. We just shut a blind fold towards them and we are all concentrated into our classes. And note taking is also going to be very helpful during our exams because we're going to have quality notes during the exams. Another important responsibility is reflecting on our day because all our day is not going to have 100% efficiency. We might have done the re recurring problems or we might have even done some new mistakes during a day. So let's reflect on them. Let's take it as a responsibility and let's reflect on them, see what mistakes that we have committed and rectify them in the forthcoming days. Moving on, the next thing is critical thinking. Now by critical thinking, I'm talking about innovative and new ideas. Once Albert Einstein quoted, we cannot solve our present day problems by thinking the same way we thought yesterday. We need to think creatively and intensively. So I think now we should stop sticking to the traditional ways and the traditional ideas. We should take up the responsibility of thinking different, of thinking weird and crazy. Well, that's what people call but let's take it as a responsibility. Let's think differently. Let's try things. Let's experiment with things. And we never know. We probably are going to change the future because ideas are what changes everything. Self-evaluation. Now in online classes, if there's going to be the biggest disadvantage, that's peer competition and peer pressure. In our physical classes, we are always used to comparing our work with what our peers have done. Let's say we were supposed to submit an assignment. 
you and your friend are very passionate about it. And if your friend does it better than you, then you're going to look at it and you're going to say, maybe next time I should do better. I should work hard, put in more time. But now in online classes, we probably are missing all those. So how do we get over this? Self-evaluation. All we need to do is finish our task or assignment and then take a step behind and see what we have done. Could it be done better? Could it have been done faster? We need to evaluate ourselves, our performance, our efficiency, the time we took for it. And when we do this, we know where to spend less time, where to spend more time, where to do and how work and when to do a smart work. And the last of this topic is competitive exams. Now, as the human population goes on increasing, the competition to get into the best institutes around the world is also steadily increasing. And at this challenging times, most of us are thinking of going back to our own country and studying. And in your own country, probably the competition is very brutal. So how do we do this? Competitive exams are the only way. How do we study for competitive exams? They are very tough. Well, in online classes, everything has become short and crisp. We have more time allocated for ourselves. If not more, then we have ample time. And we also have amazing platforms like Vedantu and Baijus where quality modules are present. So I think cracking these competitive exams should become our responsibility. We can just invest a little time, spend a little more time into solving higher order questions and surely we'll get over this. Moving on to responsibilities that come as a family member. When I talk about responsibilities as a family member, the first thing that comes to our mind is leisure time. If we were to juxtapose our present situation with how we were before the lockdown, well, our lockdown was very stressful and very hectic, but now we have a lot of time. And I think we should be spending a good amount of time with our family, especially with our parents, because the future is uncertain. We don't know what sort of challenges we are gonna face. And especially for people who are gonna apply for higher education, this is going to be very crucial. Taking a moment and talking with your parents, the problems that they faced as a bachelor while they were in colleges is going to help us a lot. For example, learning how to manage our finances when we are in our college are all going to be very helpful. So we have to spend our leisure time with our family, with our families playing all the board games. Yes, but also it's very important that we spend time with them chatting about their enriching experiences. Next thing is teaching siblings. This is perhaps one of the most interesting thing because all our younger siblings are just as frustrated at us when it comes for the online classes. But now, what if we can become the teachers for our younger siblings? What if we can teach our younger siblings? Remember, famous physicists like Richard Feynman once quoted saying that the best way to learn is by teaching. So if we take an initiative, if it becomes our responsibility to teach our younger siblings, then it's going to help us and them as well. They're probably going to understand better because you're going to teach them in your mother tongue and you're also going to learn in the due course. So I think it should become our responsibility to teach our younger siblings. And moving on, learning with siblings is also a very interesting experience. Because there are just some things, some courses or some subjects that don't have any age barriers. Take, for example, animation, video editing, photography. All these things ha have no age barriers at all. When you're interested, when you're passionate about them, you can learn them no matter what your age is. So if you and your siblings are really passionate about something, then I think it's the right time to invest that time into the particular subject because we have many online platforms like masterclasses, Udemy, which provide quality module and learning with our siblings is also going to be a very different experience. Also, it's going to be a very enriching experience. So it should become our responsibility to have a little fun while learning something new. And I'd like to end by saying, challenges are what makes life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Thank you. Wonderful presentation, Isaac.
I liked it how you could connect responsibility with the stories of people who have left a legacy behind them. And which is why we have a lot to learn from the lives of legends like Newton and William Shakespeare. Like nothing is impossible if we are responsible and determined enough to reach our goals. Thank you, Isaac. Let's give a round of applause for Isaac. So, how many of you have felt down in the dumps or felt the blue? I have. Almost all of us have, right? Yes. We all have mood swings, anxiety, sudden emotional changes, because mental health is a very important part of our lives. So now we have our third panelist, Ms. Kalinga Sahani, to speak about the positive effects of online tactics. Ms. Kalinga Sahani Bashika Binashi is a student of class 12 who also held the position of assistant head girl for the year 2019-2020. Sahani represented Ideal Indian School for the inter-school debate competition held in MES Indian School. She backed the third position in the extempore for the youth festival and is also active in sports. Let's hear Sahani's views on the topic. Thank you, Jyotisha. A very good evening, everyone, who took out time out of their day to attend this webinar. A very warm welcome to one and all. So it's no surprise that several of us are actively appreciating our guardians, our healthcare workers, frontliners, etc. But then again, it's no surprise if some of us aren't just waiting for that perfect opportunity to say a thank you that you feel won't be an awkward one. I'm not saying that if you don't show appreciation to those that deserve it, they learn to stop doing the things you appreciate. No, it might have been the case for other things, but not this one, no. They're not going to stop even if you beg them to. They're gonna to continue to do it painfully and mechanically like a robot. But the thing that reminds them of why they're doing it the thing that allows the robot to feel a warm beating heart inside is that very appreciation. Because don't forget, a person's greatest emotional need is to feel appreciated. That simple act can spark emotions that can move mountains of hurdles willingly. And that is the key word here, willingly. You giving a person a chance to feel a positive emotion can allow them to use it as their sword and their shield. So emotions are a pretty big deal. But the thing is for others, we see it as a sword and a shield, a symbol of power. But almost always for ourselves, we see it as a sign of weakness. I guess you know where I'm trying to go with this. So let's talk about the roller coaster of emotions, shall we? Ah, but Sani, Sani. Oh, what happened? Uh, are you sure though? I mean, this topic is pretty taboo, right? Yes, I'm sure. And taboo, it shouldn't be. So we're gonna dive nose first into it. Now, one emotion that's really prevailing and is usually the first we feel is boredom. Doing the same thing inside the same four walls. But troubling is when it starts evolving into more intense and uncontrollable emotions. That's the boss level of boredom, and it's pretty hard to beat. It can lead to frustrations, which often leads to angry fits, and it can go haywire. One way to effectively change this before reaching the boss level, and is actually a very good habit to keep, is to change the perspective of the things we perceive. While in boredom due to the frustration, we often think of pretty insensitive and unfair things that we'd rather not speak about, forgetting that there is an entire sea of people who'd willingly shift places with us. I'm not guilt tripping, I think, but that's not the point here. The point is, educate yourself about these people. Hear what they have to say, know what they want you to know. It is a golden time to learn about things you just wouldn't in school. And instead of distracting yourself away from it, 
throw yourself into the arms of enlightenment and cleanse your open wounds with the salt water that the unfortunate offer to you from their sea of frantic people. Now, boredom during online classes is also something that's spreading like wildfire. And I heard from someone that students often leave their seats without the knowledge of the teachers, uh, don't pay attention to class, and never mind answering the teachers back. And well, that someone is me. <laughs> because I'm victim to this boredom as well. I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, one way that has effectively helped me, and I'm saying me, is to turn your webcam on. I know, I know, I know. I can already hear it. Boo, what, no way. Okay, I know, but hear me out. It's been surprisingly effective because now I'm being watched. And also because I don't wanna get publicly humiliated in front of class. And also because sometimes we just work better under pressure and supervision. And if you don't want to show your face, that's completely fine. Point your camera towards your study material and you're all set. And if you have a personal issue, you can of course talk to your respective teachers about it. Now, another soaring emotion where we keep experiencing new degrees of its potential and it's showing no remorse whatsoever, is loneliness. This lovely emotion over here is one of those that's teaching us lessons about life while making its way into our own. This emotion over here, it should be taken care of. It should be well understood and, and embraced. Don't approach it with such caution and distaste like it's some unfamiliar beast that must be under the rule of an iron fist. That is honestly the wrong method of approach towards almost anything. I think we all can agree on that. So do you really think that it is a good method of approach towards something that is so personal and so humane? Hmm? And don't shove it aside. Take time to prepare yourself, but not for war, but rather for compassion. Shoving it aside while it's still young, just because it is a little uncomfortable will only lead to it wanting to hurry up in the growth process, like a child. So it will grow, right? It will grow. But it will grow disproportionately and unhealthily. And finally, come back to you waiting for its acceptance. It would have mutated to several other different dangerous forms all in one single body, waiting for you to finally claim what is rightfully yours. So maintain your relationships like how you've been doing. You've been doing great. And you realize how much of your stress and anxiety just washes away. Because in a time as hard and hopeless like this one, positivity is important. Keeping a healthy mindset is important. And dealing with your feelings rationally is important. Don't underestimate them. Don't make that mistake again. And it's obvious there are some feelings that we just want to shove aside. because. It's annoying, okay, it's annoying. But we keep saying the same thing. Um, I just didn't have enough time to deal with it. But now, let's deal with it as much as we can. Often ask yourself why you feel a particular way. That will slowly help in unraveling the base of the problem. That might be a little blurry and hard to figure out at first because of the ears of keeping it away from arm's reach, brain's thought, and heart's compassion. And the response to your why doesn't always have to be a super deep one. For example, hmm, my heart must be acting up right now because I ate that cheap chocolate with an unhealthy amount of sugar, right? Sooner or later, it will be a natural reaction and another healthy habit obtained. In conclusion, your emotional roller coaster will slowly but steadily be something that you are prepared for, something that you will not fear or ignore, and something that you will take necessary precautions against. In contrast to your earlier trips to the roller coaster, where you probably brought in a drink, a full stomach, and who knows, an insecure phone with you. <laughs> and they are all mistakes we practice to learn from. Because as we all know, the good old saying, practice is to perform or exercise repeatedly or regularly in order to acquire, improve, or maintain proficiency. <laughs> okay, just joking, just joking. How about we try that again? 
practice is the only way of mastering the art of using your mistakes and your failures. Yep, those are the building blocks to success, failures, remember them? <laughs> those building blocks to build stairs rather than walls. Thank you very much, and I hope you have an amazing day ahead. Yes, Sahani, you're absolutely right. Our emotional quotient and mental health matters a lot, and we need to talk about it. Self isolation has led to a roller coaster of emotions, as you had mentioned, and online classes play an important role in providing platforms for us to talk about our mental health. And it also teaches us that we need not fight the monster all alone. Thank you, Sahani. It was a beautiful presentation. And fun fact clapping hands actually helps your mental and physical health. So let's give a round of applause for Sahani. Audience, if you have any questions or inquiries, please jot it down in the chat box. Now we move on to our next panelist, Ms. Zenobia Fernandez. Ms. Zenobia Fernandez is a student of class 12. She was the secretary of the Voice Out Ideal English Literary Club and holds the position of Red House Captain presently. It's her ambition to become an orthopedic surgeon someday. Now, Zenobia is a very interesting girl. She enjoys and reads anything and everything from novels of all genres and science journals to nutritional labels and user manuals of appliances that have retired long time ago. Now, let's hear what exciting points Zenobia has got for us. Thank you, Jyotisha. Good evening, everyone. I hope my fellow speakers have kept you all intrigued and entertained till now. You never call. You are always too busy to talk. Wow, Sandra, if I never called you, you'd just pretend like I don't exist, wouldn't you? Great going, cuz. Can't you even text me once in a while? Like sometimes I think you're more busy than the Secretary General of the United Nations and some politicians campaign manager combined. Like one text would do. These were only some of the phrases that Sandra was constantly bombarded with by her friends and family. But now she isn't. Why you ask? Oh, because now she has time. She can FaceTime her grandparents, cousins, aunts, uncles, old classmates, childhood friends. She can call and text them whenever she wants because now she has all the time in the world. One thing that we can all agree on when it comes to online classes is that we have a lot of free time now. Lots and lots of it. More than we know what to do with at times, if I'm being honest. This me time, though, not only gives us the opportunity to introspect and analyze ourselves, but also the chance to improve and become better versions of ourselves. One field that a lot of us would want to improve in would be our interpersonal skills, or as we more commonly like to call them, people skills, which is quite an apt name if you ask me. And even if you think that you're good, really good. You can still try and brush up your skills. For as Leonardo da Vinci rightly said, learning is the only thing that the mind never exhausts, never fears, and never regrets. Interpersonal skills are the ability to initiate and engage in healthy and fruitful conversations with individuals and groups for building relationships, furthering business interests, and leisure. No matter how quiet or reserved one is, we all want to talk. We all want to speak. <sighs> but alas, not every one of us is a social butterfly. But don't worry, it's not too late. All this free time gives us the opportunity to do so much. So why not enroll in an interpersonal skills course? Not only do you improve your skills, you also get the opportunity to meet new people and make more friends. And voila, 
half your work is already done because speaking to your new friends is excellent practice for flexing your newfound skills. Isn't it the best of both worlds? New friends and better interpersonal skills should be more than enough incentive to try and improve your people's skills. Now, sitting behind your phone or laptop is safe. It is easy. You don't have to worry about people's judgmental stares because you can't see them. As the old adage goes, out of sight, out of mind, meh, brush them off. With the safety and comfort of a screen in front of you, it is easier to speak up and voice out your opinions. Reserve students will find it easier to open up and spill their thoughts. Beautiful thoughts that might make a huge difference in someone's life or make another stop in the endless rat race of life and ponder for a while. Start small. For today, speak from behind the safety of your screen. Tomorrow, speak in front of your friends. One another day, speak in front of your friends. And one day in the future, speak in front of a crowd. Teachers should not only initiate and engage students in teacher on student conversations, but also in group conversations between students. One such helpful tool for this initiative is the breakout room feature in Zoom, which is only one tool of many more waiting out there to be discovered by us to help us. Interpersonal skills are an integral part of our lives. In fact, human society depends on it. For without communication, what are we? And it doesn't end there. The sky is your limit. And if you want, you don't have to stop at the sky either because you are only as limited as you let yourself be. Don't stop at interpersonal skills. Go further. Hone skills you already have and are good at. There's always scope for more improvement and a little improvement never hurt anyone. Enroll in an online yoga or Zumba class with your friends, siblings, parents, or even your whole family. Gardening with a family member is killing two birds with one stone. You learn the ins and outs of gardening, the various health and medicinal benefits of various plants. You spend time with your family member and strengthen your bond with them. You hone your interpersonal skills and get some much needed vitamin D. Phew. Okay, okay, I was wrong. That was killing five birds with one stone. And it is only one of many. Now is the best time to hone our skills and build better relationships with the help of our newfound skills. You could be a student, a working adult, or even a retired person, but it is never too late to learn. Never stop learning. For when you stop learning, you stop growing. I'll leave you all with that quote from Loyal Jack Lumen for now, but don't forget, better late than never. Thank you. Thank you, Sanobia. It is very true that this time of self-isolation is the time to develop our skills. Because I'm sure all of us, all of us would have learned something new or started up something that we have always wanted to do, right? Let's give a warm round of applause for Zenobia. Now, let's move on to our fifth panelist, Master Robin Abraham Vertu. Master Robin Abraham Verkees is a student of class 12 in the Commerce Stream. He holds the Office of Cultural Secretary for the year 2020-2021. He held the position of Assistant Cultural Secretary for the year 2019-2020. Robin is very much interested in the field of management. Robin was the second runner-up for the elocution conducted by the Qatar Indian Schools Youth Festival Kalanjali 2019. Now, let's hear Robin's views on the topic. Respected dignitaries and my dear viewers, good evening and good readings. Before beginning, let me thank our moderator for the day, Jodi Pillai, for the very fabulous introduction. Thank you. Now, let's get started. 
on 9th March 2020, Ministry of Education and Higher Education Qatar issued an order demanding the closure of all educational institutions due to COVID-19 situation as a preventive measure. After hearing the news, just like any other student, I was very happy, very happy and excited, to be very frank. But later on when the days passed by, the thought that I'm in 12th, board exams are going to happen, transformed all these happiness and joy into nervousness and fear. And then days went on. And on one fine day, a message came from my class teacher. The message reads like this. Dear students, hope you're all doing good. We are about to begin with our online classes very soon. Get ready. Thus, e-learning or online education was introduced, not just in Idle Indian School, not just in Qatar, not just in the Gulf region, but in the whole world, globally, at all levels of education be it primary, higher secondary, or professional institutes. All have adopted the very e-learning process. This wonderful opportunity to learn, interact, and explore has provided many positive impacts, few of which has already been spoken out. Now, I will be bringing forth yet another positive impact, which is nothing but family bonding. My dear viewers, during this lockdown period, I developed the habit of reading online articles and newspapers. And while going through many such articles, I happened to come across one written by Mrs. Reshma. Mrs. Reshma is a finance manager of a business organization operating in India. She has to leave for her work by nine in the morning and could return home only by seven in the evening. This gave her very few hours to spend time with her one-year-old boy who just began to stand and crawl around. And this is when COVID-19 lockdown was imposed in India. She now says she has got enough and more time to do things and activities which she always wanted to, such as crafting, gardening, painting, and most importantly, spending time with her one-year-old boy. For sure, COVID-19 has changed our lives in unprecedented manner. For sure, it has brought in lots of uncertainties in our life, whether it be about our job security, whether it be about how one will survive, and whether it be about when our normal lives will ever return. But on the other end of the coin, it is providing us ample time and opportunity to interact and bond with our family. There is a good old saying, having someone to love is family, having somewhere to go is home, and having both is a blessing. My dear friends who are hearing me out, family relationship is like a bridge, which is built with lots of love, care, affection, and emotions. Keep that safe and secure at all stages of your life, no matter what, because your family is the only one who will stand with you even when the whole world turn against you. Further, let me remind you, family is not an important thing, but it's everything. I repeat, family is not an important thing, but it's everything. One lesson this COVID-19 lockdown taught us is that it's only our family who is going to stay with us forever. All the rest, I repeat, all the rest is either distant or temporary. Now let me bring before you my personal experience and that too during the pre-COVID-19 period. During the pre-COVID-19 period, I had to wake up early by 4.30 in the morning. After getting ready, completing my prayers, I will have to wait for my school bus, which will arrive by 5.30 or 5.45. And then having 30 to 60 minutes of journey, I reach my school where my classes begin at seven and goes on till 1.30 in the afternoon. And then once again, coming back home, having my lunch and taking a nap. Once again, I must get ready to move to my tuitions, which begins at four and goes on till eight or 8.30. Coming back home from tuitions after having some tea or snacks prepared by my mother, I will once again be engaged in finishing off my homework or classworks which I will be expected 
the summit on the very next day at school. This gave me very limited time to interact and bond with my family. But the introduction of e-learning or online education changed everything upside down. To be very genuine with you, prior to this COVID-19, I rarely knew anything about cooking or household works. But today, all thanks to my mother and sister, I'm learning the very basics for my survival. And now I'm even able to assist my mother in her household tasks. My dear friends who are hearing me out, what your parents require from you is not to have a brain loaded with bookish knowledge, but rather it's to have a heart full of love with an ear open to listen and a hand willing to help. And my dear parents, what children require from you is not to accumulate money for them, but rather it is to have your time, attention, affection, and care. This lockdown period is providing opportunity for both of these. Take advantage of this time because time and tide waits for none. All we need to have a happy life is very little and all of it is within ourselves. It's in our way of thinking. Let me conclude by saying, love is the most valuable currency which an individual can ever have. Spend it on your family who nurture your life. Thank you and hope to see you all on the other end of the crisis. Goodbye. Thank you, Robin. Family sure is everything. And I personally feel that the online classes has brought my family closer to my friends and teachers who are my family at school. Don't you all think so? So let's give it up for Robin. So our next panelist is Ms. Gayatri Satish K. Ms. Gayatri Satish K is a student of class 11 of the science stream. She is active in all the literary activities and is also a member of the literary club. She holds the position of assistant cultural secretary presently. She backed the first position for the poem recitation in Qatar Indian School Youth Festival, Kalanjali 2019, and the second position for the poem recitation in the talent fest conducted by the Ideal Indian School. Let's hear Gayatri's views on the topic. Thank you, Jyotisha. Good evening, everyone. I'm here to share my thoughts on the positive effects of online classes on the ways to take technology forward. I remember a story, the fun they had from my ninth standard written by Isaac Asimov in 1951. This is a very light story set in the future 2157. This book tells us about a time where children are learning in designated rooms in private houses. They have mechanical teachers already programmed for their respective class. It's quite funny that we haven't even reached 2157 and here we are attending classes online. Honestly, I would have never believed if anyone were to tell me back in ninth that I would be attending classes online. But I'm glad that technology has developed this far to give us what we require in a time like, th time like this. During COVID-19 pandemic, technologies are playing a crucial role in keeping our society functional in a time of lockdowns and quarantines. We are all having a hard time in our lives due to this pandemic. It has interrupted our daily routines. but with the aid of technology, we are able to work from home, learn with the help of online classes. We should be actually grateful for the online classes, even if we didn't compensate for the classroom experience. But just imagine if we didn't have the online class, the facility of online class, we would have had to repeat another year and would have broken our flow. Hence, in this situation, it is completely necessary for the educational institutes to ensure that our education is not disrupted by the quarantine measures. And this pandemic has actually become a catalyst for the educational institutes worldwide to search for innovative solutions in a relatively short period of time. 
this techno these technologies actually have a long lasting impact beyond covid-19 because we are seeing a new shift in the educational platform from the traditional classroom to the digital classroom it is hard to understand the notion of leaving behind the conventional classroom but at this point of our lives we have no other choice but to accept the system and comprehend it with a positive mind this might be this might seem to be challenging but it is imperative to accept this change to deliver the best to the generation we are learning beyond the four walls of our classroom because this is a social virtual reality space where students can collaborate and communicate in one room from anywhere in the world anywhere in the world as though they are all in the same place the traditional in person classroom learning will be complemented with new learning modalities online teaching makes use of the digital tool and software like video calls animation storyboard quizzes for our teachers to connect with us remotely continuing the classroom experience in a virtual space as long as we have internet access we are able to embrace learning from anywhere in the world every school does not have the technological facilities like smart board or projectors but with the educate online educational platform the visual experience is experienced by all the students all over the globe every single child gets equal opportunity to learn to gain knowledge to be part of the literate population they are able to get high quality education from top teachers regardless of any social inequality factors we are also able to collaborate and network with people with diverse life experience from all over the world teachers can connect with students across the world through online platforms and create content of high quality there are also other numerous benefits of virtual classrooms such as cost effective as it saves travel and accommodation expenses the other is that it is um, non uh, non restricting as teachers and students participate in live synchronized manner virtual classrooms are also great options for impromptu meeting and group project because it allows the members to check in on progress and discuss ideas and interact lively with virtual classroom learning can now take place anywhere everywhere anytime some people find online classes ineffective and choose to dwell on its negative side but but we need to get over the idea of online um, of high quality education needing to be offered in a face to face format as opposed to being offered in an adaptable online format because desperate time calls for desperate measures online classes are also clearing a path forward for technology for example distance learning for people to complete the respective courses and this is really helpful for people who stopped in between the course and they can resume it now another example is that notes are too much in higher classes so now they are sent through mails and other apps even before the pandemic technology had already combined with the educational system but only when the online classes are on full swing we are able to realize how much education has become digitalized in this generation in this current state most of the things are conducted with the help of technologies as meetings group dis- uh, discussions are conducted via zoom google meet etc people are able to work from home and remain employed but most important is how we are able to connect with people during this covid-19 pandemic we are able to still keep in touch with our dear ones even if we are far yet we are still close before we used letters to communicate but gradually the means of communication went a bit more forward telephone was invented then cell phone came into the scene then smartphones where we could just hear the audio of the person on the other end of the line now there are various other apps for video calling where we can interact as if the person is here with us so what i'm trying to say is that technology has changed drastically in the last two decades and it is still changing we are changing we are also evolved accordingly so that we can cope up with the pace of the world technology 
is a field with multiple opportunities and development and improvement. So technology's way forward is a very exciting concept. But as the future is uncertain, we can cannot we cannot neither confirm or deny that in the future, maybe our teachers will be replaced by artificial intelligence. But currently, we have great teachers to mentor and guide us and to help us continue our studies in a normal way in this pandemic thanks to online classes. I conclude by saying that the hardest part of learning is not embracing new ideas, but letting go of our old ones. Let us embrace the idea of online classes because this is the only option we have right now and adjust with the fast changing pace of the world. Because as Charles Darwin said, in the struggle for survival, the fittest win out at the expense of their rivals because they succeed in adapting themselves best to the environment. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Gayatri. Very well spoken. It's very true. Online classes have become very much fun and interesting that we've started to embrace. After all, our teachers are working tirelessly day and night to make our classes interesting and informative. It has brought me closer to my teachers and now I value and how much dedicated to their work. So let's give loud cheers to all the teachers around the world who work selflessly to provision like as an appreciation. Thank you. Our seventh panelist is Master Giri Shankar. Master Giri Shankar is a student of class 12 in the Commerce Stream. He holds the office as the Blue House Captain for the year 2020-2021. Sorry, 2020-2021. He is fascinated about the field of economics and journalism. Let's hear Giri's views on the topic. First of all, I would like to thank the moderator of the day, Ms. Jodisha, for introducing me to this wonderful audience and to all my friends and viewers, a very good evening. As the say goes, when you challenge people, you lose one day. When you challenge yourself, you win every day. The COVID-19 pandemic is a major shock to the world. Even some of the top reputed countries couldn't control this pandemic. But human beings have a special ability to adapt, which is one of the unique feature of human mankind. You have heard of Spanish flu, which occurred hundreds of years ago. But if it comes again, we know how to deal with it. Because we have adapted through this uh, time and we know how to deal with it and we know where we have failed. But the current pandemic has brought an enormous personal, economic, and social damage. So it's time for us to think and act fast. To cope up with these situations, we have to mainly focus on these following areas, which is education, business, lifestyle, and healthcare. Since our major focus is on education, I'll be explaining about education following with business and lifestyle. Once Nelson Mandela quoted, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. The world right now is adjusting to a new reality which was unimaginable a few months ago. The COVID-19 has altered all aspects of our lives, introducing upward changes the way good businesses and communities operate. A recent virtual summit of G20 leaders understood the changing times. The pandemic has an impact on education systems all around the world, 
hosting more than 1.5 billion students out of their schools and universities. This crisis offers an important reflection on the educational leaders all around the globe to question the status quo and explore new approaches for delivering education to these millions of students. How can the global educational community use this vital moment to provide education to these millions of students and also meet the demands of the future? The world faces significant challenges in addressing the immediate and longer term effects of the pandemic on educational systems, but finding new and innovative ways to deliver quality education should provide us all with a sense of hope. So the first step taken in order to overcome this educational crisis is by introducing online classes. These actions and measures ensure children and young people continue to receive their vital education through online, particularly in response with the COVID-19. While safety of students and staff is the top priority, it is inspiring to observe how schools are devoted to their mission of continuing education using an adaptive learning approach during, during these challenging times. We don't grow when things are easy. We grow when we face challenges. Now, if you come to the business point of view, a struggling economy, a collapsing healthcare system, and a tremendous amount of losses are making individuals and business people terribly afraid. We are uncertain because the world, as we know, is a complete shutdown. Big and small business face an uncertain future. They rely on a predictable environment in order to make money. And right now, nothing is predictable. Employees cannot come to the office and most businesses have to be done through online, which they weren't use of. Profits are plummeting during this crisis. And while government are promising help, but the funds are not sufficient. But businesses can survive if they are able to adapt. One way is to create a new employee dynamic, indulging more efficient methods and creating an online presence and a better business continuity plan, which is well suited to cope up with any upcoming crisis in the future. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. Winston Churchill. Well, a couple of months ago, we used to go for hangouts. We used to enjoy with our friends and families outside. But after being locked down at home, many people, especially families with young children, were looking for lockdown compliant habits to get outside. The COVID-19 crisis rehabilitated the entire mode of living where the people were adoring so far. The shutting down of sports clubs, malls, parks, etc. made the situation more worse. Well, yeah, people are shortcuts, right? So, well, this led to people discovering new ways to keep their quarantine period more entertaining discovering new talents, acquiring new knowledge, and spending quality time with the family. As my friend said before, you are spending major part of the day in various activities and you lack the interaction with family. So this is the time to enjoy with family and make this lockdown period more entertaining. Intelligence is the ability to adapt to the change. As we come to the end of this topic, a question arises, how will be the future? Or how certain will be the future? Of course, we will be able to come through this. We will overcome this. But if we are able to make through this crisis, we have to get a continuity plan in place. The world, as we know, is not as certain as it was a couple of months ago. We need to take this opportunity to learn more from the areas we failed. We know we are in the 21st century where the technology is so advanced, but we couldn't control this pandemic. That means we have failed somewhere. So 
we need to take this time to reevaluate the plans learn learn from the failures and adapt to a new reality so my dear friends never wait for a perfect moment just take the moment and make it perfect stay home stay safe and this is girishankar thanking you all thank you giri i must say that it was a very impressive presentation we must all accept the fact that if it wasn't for this pandemic then it would have been for some other reason that we take such a huge technological step in the field of education giri's presentation reminded me the words of the great philosopher socrates that the secret to change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old but on building the new let's give a round of applause for giri shankar audience i repeat if you have any questions and queries you can jot it down in the chat box now we move on to our last panelist for the day master daryl menezes Master Daryl Menezes is a student of class 12 of the science stream. He is the head boy for the year 2020-2021. He held the position of assistant head boy for the academic year 2019-2020. He is very much interested in the field of aerospace science and technology. He backed the second position for the dramatic monologue conducted by the Idol Indian School. Moreover, Daryl also passed the rock and pop examination conducted by the trinity college london with distinction daryl you may now share your views on the topic thank you moderator i appreciate the introduction good evening respected dignitaries panelists and everyone attending this webinar session today with us I'm obliged to speak on the topic positive impact of online classes on time management. The world today is fighting a serious battle against COVID-19 pandemic and many offices and schools are now virtual. However, online classes has created a positive impact in the student's life. Studying online gives you more flexibility. You can now study and interact with your class teacher and classmates at your own pace of time. you also can add on your hobbies around your coursework more easily now studying online means you can choose your own learning environment whichever works best for you be it your bedroom or your study room it will also help you to become more self motivated a trait that will help you stand out in the future studying online also means you don't have to commute to the classes which means less time spent on the bus and more study time on the couch you no longer have to worry about driving in the sandstorm or missing an important class however many of us fall in the trap of procrastination and then we think when the day got over we had thought so much to do wanted to complete most of the work but did what nothing learning online requires you to set aside some time of your own so that you go through your lessons your activities and uh, and always have uh, but this really requires discipline and real understanding of how you manage your time our life completely depends on how each day passes so everyone gets the same time right 24 hours however the only difference is how each one of us manages that 24 hours in the best way if you organize your days properly then in a short period of time you can achieve many things in your life you can be stress free time will not be wasted and you'll get more opportunities in your life now the role of time management for a student stands highly imperative it's a key to achieve your goals in the right frame of time whether you study as a regular student attending school or as an online student managing your time efficiently has its own share of perks so what is time management time management is the ability to plan and control the amount of time you spend on activities now there are many reasons for poor time management like procrastination self control issues being unorganized and many more the only way to overcome this is by learning the skill of time management so if time management is a skill how can it be learned the basic concepts of time management is easy to grasp but difficult to put into practice so here are a few time management tips that i like to share with you 
let's go with the first tip that is plan ahead now despite the flexibility of being an online student it's very important for us to have frequent engagement with our studies and assignments throughout the week so consider using a planner or your smartphone instead to plan your weekly and daily assignments moving on to the second tip that is don't multitask avoid multitasking as it could actually decrease your productivity focus on one assignment at a time and arrange your task in order of importance then focus on the three to four crucial tasks that requires more effort to it if you need help staying focused you can always consider using a project management tool or create a to do list also concentrate on what needs to be done at the present and avoid anything that is too far off if it's a small assignment that requires uh, less attention to it you can always put it on your calendar and focus on it when the deadline is closer now the second third tip is block out distractions make sure to avoid surfing the web excessively it's very easy to become distracted by the news or your favorite celebrity gossip site so stay focused and avoid using facebook twitter or the social media tools when you need to concentrate on your studies more now for example you can do this you can set a 25 minute timer and work uninterrupted for that particular scheduled period of time now then you can take a 5 minute break to grab a coffee or check your emails or do anything else once you have completed four study sessions you can treat yourself with a longer 15 minute break this will help you a lot now the fourth tip is reward yourself this one's my favorite it's very important to reward yourself after you have completed a task otherwise it will become very difficult for you to even concentrate on the simplest ones you can reward yourself by celebrating your accomplishments or doing something you truly enjoy whether it's uh, watching your favorite show on netflix or using it as a leisure time this will motivate you a lot the fifth tip is get a good night sleep sleep is very essential for our body and it will help to keep our mind and body fresh for the next day try to get about 7 to 8 hours of rest a night and include sleep in your schedule and you can reap huge rewards in your life also with a positive attitude let's all reframe i am stuck inside to i can finally focus on my studies and assignments this will help you to concentrate on your work more now before i conclude i'd like to share with you an instance that we usually face in a general life okay now imagine you were given 86400 rupees every single day in your bank account with a very few conditions that uh, you cannot carry forward this to the next day nor you can take a loan or overdraft against it so what would you do in that case withdraw and use it right i would do the same thing similarly we are given 86400 seconds each and every day we cannot carry forward to the next day nor take a loan and neither buy time as well once it's gone it's gone your time is the most valuable asset and every moment wasted cannot be bought back we all are guilty of procrastination right so use your time wisely take every day every moment and make something out of it make something positive in the end we can't stop or control time but if you want to take control over your online learning and make the best out of it you need to know how to manage your time in the best way time management is something every student can and should learn is not just for those who are naturally gifted at planning and arranging so remember use your time wisely so that you head in the right direction to achieve your goals and success if you get stuck at any concept don't waste much of your time thinking over it instead seek timely help from your class teacher or classmates who understand the assignment more than you do to get a better idea on it and get moving with your plans as long as you study online if you follow these tips i'm very sure you'll manage your time in the best way finally a famous quote by sir vincent churchill let us advance worrying become our advance thinking and planning on that note this is dalminesis thanking you all stay safe stay healthy thank you wow daryl that was an enlightening presentation we all have the same 24 hours a day and the sad truth is almost all of us take time for granted the fact that we need to learn to manage time wisely and in a disciplined manner is to get enough time is something that we i totally agree with you and we need to learn it moreover online classes have reduced the time consumption 
that you have a lot of time left to do something productive every single day. I hope everyone tries to inculcate values from Daryl's presentation. Thank you, Daryl. Let's give him a round of applause. Friend. Now that was the last panelist for the day. Now we shall proceed to our question answer segment. Ms. Zia Sulfikar will be our question answer coordinator. Ms. Zia Sulfikar is a student of class 10 and is active in sports and literary activities. She is also a member of the Ideal Literary Club Voice Out. She backed the first position in the inter-school elocution Islamic awareness competition, second position in Pick and Speak, and first position in expressive reading. Moreover, Zia was also the individual champion Taekwondo gold medalist, winner of the TBSC Athletics Clusters, and also a qualifier in the IAAF Diamond League 2019. I'm sure Zia would do great as our question answer coordinator. Ms. Zia, you may now proceed to the question answer segment and put forward the questions presented to our panelists by our lovely audience. Thank you, Jyotisha. I'm sure you will all agree with me that this has been one of the most enriching webinars we have all attended in the recent times. The highlights being the whole effort by the students and for the students. This is indeed a very commendable initiative by Ideal Indian School Doha, Qatar. I'm sure that the listeners would like to know further. I request the panelists to enlighten our listeners on the following questions which are frequently asked. Here comes the first question. How can students cope with the continuous stress and anxiety that they face during online classes? I repeat, how can students cope with the continuous stress and anxiety that they face during online classes? Yes, and Ms. Sahani has come forward to answer this question. Thank you, Zia. Um, I would like to take up this question as it does fall on my field of the presentation. Uh, now, first, know whether your negative thoughts are logical, justifiable, or not. Know whether they are reasonable for you to have them or not. Uh, there are plenty of uh, trusted online resources for you to check out to really separate your facts from your fiction. Uh, second, I would suggest is to challenge yourself. Yes, another challenge. Um, challenge your negative thoughts with more positive alternatives. Uh, for example, instead of saying, yeah, I'm definitely not going to get through that. That's too hard for me. How about you try... I've gone through my fair share of problems and even though it did take up quite a lot, a lot of my time and my energy, um, I'm here, I am here. As the last panelist had suggested that you do. And third, uh, the last, but definitely not the least, is uh, to use more kind and compassionate language with yourself, like how you would to a hurting friend. Uh, don't say stuff like, uh, because it's me, it's okay if I'm harsh. It's okay if I'm hurting. I don't, don't do that. Instead, um, make sure that you treat yourself the same way that you would to a hurting friend. Otherwise, that's just called double standards. And it's not really a good principle to follow anywhere or anytime, especially not at a time like this one. So yes, thank you. And I hope I have cleared out your doubt. Thank you, Ms. Sahani. I hope the viewers are satisfied with that answer. The next question is, does technology replace or does it aid human beings? I repeat, does technology replace or does it aid human beings? Yes, Ms. Gayathri has volunteered to answer. Thank you, Zia. I would like to take up this question. Uh, technology, is surely advancing at a rapid rate. While a machine can perform a given task often more efficiently than we can, but what it lacks is the artistry in the activity, that, that unique human ability to cater to the needs of the individual, 
there will be many other factors involved in the impact of automation including our desire to interact with others for example you can get your money whenever and wherever you want even when the bank is in open you can bank on your phone with various apps like google pay and all etc but when you walk into the bank there are still people working there because when it comes to our money sometimes we still want to talk to a trained professional so my point is that people still matter and that's an important point to keep in mind even in scenarios that don't involve doesn't involve advanced education like physicians it doesn't mean that we as humans don't want to interact with people instead of machine so in my opinion i think that technology might be able to replace human hands but never human beings i hope i answered your query thank you thank you ms gayatri for your valuable points the listeners would like to know further on how students can limit their distractions during online classes i repeat how can students limit their distractions during online classes Yes. Yes, Master Dial is here to answer the question. Thank you. So first of all, online classes have been very beneficial for our students uh, by giving us a lot of time and hand. And now this could most of the time lead to distractions. The biggest distractions that uh, we students come across is the mobile phone and the same applies to me as well. So let me tell you what uh, I do to limit my distractions. um i delete the app which are not really required for me when i'm doing an important task or uh, during a, during the online classes now this doesn't mean i'm not going to download the apps again of course i'm going to download it again but only when i have completed with the task so as it acts as a reward to myself so this is how uh, we all could limit our distractions and uh, use our time in the most productive way as possible i hope i have uh, answered to the question Thank you Master Dal. Coming up the next question is what is the best way to spend time with your family? I repeat, what is the best way to spend time with your family? Yes. Uh yes. Master Robin will be answering this question. Good question indeed. See, uh, spending quality time with your family differs from individual to individual and family to family. For some, it might be to spend time on a joyful conversation, while for others, it might be engaging in a game of carrums, chess, or ludo, or so many more. But now, if you ask me to suggest, I would say have one time a meal a day together, because a family that eats together stays together. Thank you. Thank you Master Robin. I totally agree with him. The family gathering around the dinner table is definitely a strong tool to strengthen the bond. I'm here with the next question. It says that the pandemic has opened up new opportunities in the world of education. Could you please elaborate the statement? I repeat, it says that the pandemic has opened up new opportunities in the world of education could you please elaborate this statement yes yes ms sandra has come forward to answer this question thank you zia i'd like to take up this question because i had covered it in my presentation um like i had mentioned that there are many students who come from weaker socio economic communities and many of these children themselves don't have access to traditional learning resources like our teachers or our textbooks so you can say that the pandemic has really helped open up new opportunities and avenues in the sense that many governments are now trying to find creative ways to bring about technological advancement in these backward areas so these students they are now able to avail these facilities where they'll be connected to not just their local communities but they'll be put up on a global platform So in this way the pandemic has really managed to decrease the disparities in children's access to educational support and educational opportunities. Uh, I hope this has answered your question. Thank you. Thank you Ms Sandra. This pandemic has opened up a world of opportunities 
with only two requirements, which are a willing mind and a strong Wi-Fi. And with that, the sky's the limit. I'm sure these answers have added value to the topics discussed. Thank you, panelists, and over to you, Jyotisha. Thank you, Zia. The question answer segment was really interesting. Now, that brings us to the end of the webinar. So let's put our hands together and give a loud round of applause for our wonderful panelists. Thank you. Now, I request all of you to close your eyes and travel back to one week before the pandemic broke out. Our school, the classrooms, the playground, our friends, our lovely teachers, annual days, sports day, all the memories we had in the campus. We miss all of it, don't we? We did not expect any of this. And I, being a student of class 12, was almost devastated by the thought of being deprived of education and missing the last few days of my school life. But you know what was most unexpected? The online classes. Technology proved once again to have a solution for the challenges we faced. My home may not look like the campus, obviously, but I am still at school. I may not be physically in touch with my, my friends and teachers, but I am mentally and emotionally connected to them more than ever. Once we replace the negative thoughts with the positive ones, we shall start having positive results. Yesterday is not ours to recover, but tomorrow is ours to win or lose. The webinar wouldn't have been this successful if it wasn't for the principal of Idle Indian School, Mr. Syed Shokat Ali. I thank you, sir, from the very bottom of my heart. I would like to thank Mr. Anwar MK, the media coordinator, and the entire IT department for being the pillar of support for this webinar. I also thank all the teachers in charge, Mr. Asif Ali, Ms. Sandhya Shekhar, Ms. Lipsi Sabu, and Mr. Anwar Sadat for the guidance provided. I thank the heads of section and all the teachers on behalf of the panelists and myself for giving us the opportunity to be a part of this webinar, which I believe is a great experience and exposure during this unprecedented condition. I sincerely thank all the panelists without whose active participation this webinar would have been impossible. Last, but never the least, I express my gratitude to all the students and well-wishers who have played a vital role in making this event a cheerful and a successful one. Keep your face towards the sunshine and you cannot be a shadow. Once again, thank you and goodbye. This is Jyotisha Pillai signing out. Thank you so much, children. You have done excellent and uh, it was an amazing webinar, I think so. Uh, we appreciate each one of you and uh, I thank all the panelists and uh, moderator plus uh, the person who was asking question as Zia Zulfikar and all the teachers involved. Definitely this is first step. We'll have a couple of seminar more, couple of webinars more where all of you can rejoin and do one